Hi, this is Mary, your holistic recovery coach, helping connect you to resources for healing, recovery, and personal growth. Today, I want to talk about a recovery concept called principles over personalities, or putting principles before personalities. As a recovery coach, I realized that there are many paths to recovery. Whatever works, addiction is a serious illness, um, physical, mental, and spiritual, and there are many paths to recovering from it. Still today, one of the most common uh, recovery paths is through use of 12-step programs, and that's actually where this today's recovery concept comes from. The original um, literature from the original 12-step program, which happens to be Alcoholics Anonymous, um, the first book was called Alcoholics Anonymous, named after this, this program, this fellowship that had developed, and then about, and that was 1939, and then in about um, 12 or 13 years later, they published a book called The 12 Steps and 12 Traditions. And this concept of principles over personalities was first introduced in that book um, in the 12th tradition. So what are those? Well, the 12 steps are what are applied to the individual, the individual person trying to recover. Um, and they work those 12 steps. The 12 traditions um, are more focused on the group as a whole. So the AA group, the 12 step groups as a whole, as an organization. Um, and is based on the original members' experiences in the early years and certain um, traditions that they realized, ways they've been operating that were working. And that if they continued that way, hopefully the program would continue to help many, many people and um, kind of stay out of its own way, so to speak. Um, so that the individuals don't get in the way of the, the overall um, impact um, and effectiveness of the, of the program itself. So that being said, um, principles over personalities. So that comes from the 12th tradition, which um, comes out of this, here's one old, old version of the 12 steps and 12 traditions book. So I'll just read that right out of that is tradition 12. Anonymity is the spiritual foundation of all our traditions, ever reminding us to place principles before personalities. So in that chapter, they explain where that came from. Again, so, so the principles are more applied to the group as a whole, but I wanted to talk about this as a recovery concept because I think it really applies, this is one that can really apply to the individual as well, which is why we, we hear it in, in the recovery communities, in the recovery world, you'll hear people say principles over personalities, principles before personalities. And, and I wanna talk a little bit about why and what that means. Because it's one of those things, if you're new to recovery, you might not understand what people are talking about when they say that. Um, so first, just a, a little bit of, quick history about how um, they explain in the literature where this tradition came out of. They're talking about anonymity, right? So they're talking about principles um, before personalities as an example of, or anonymity as an example of that. So the thing about the anonymity is, is people think that um, anonymity in these 12-step programs is about not using your last name or people not really knowing who you are. That's not exactly true. In the very early days, anonymity, they, they admit, was was mostly fear-based. There was such a strong stigma um, against alcoholics. Um, you know, drunks were considered hopeless, was considered a hopeless malady that, that even the, you know, the doctors really didn't know how to treat back then, not effectively. Um, so, when, so when AA came around, um, at first it was really more like a secret society. And for the protection of the individuals, it, it was sort of anonymous. They just didn't, they didn't introduce themselves um, publicly or even amidst, uh, um, among each other often um, with, with personal details um, as to their, their identity. Um, so in the beginning, it really was sort of about conf confidentiality and that's where the name of, of the group and then the book as a result came from. Um, but then over time, as word spread, because so many people um, who had been hopeless, found out that there was hope through, through some type of recovery program. They wanted to know about it. So when they published that first book in 1939, what happened was they, they were concerned there would be so much, um, too many inquiries from the countless um, active alcoholics struggling who would want to reach out to the individuals who had, who had gotten well. And so that was kind of the, the thought behind not, about not breaking their own anonymity when they, when they published all you know, the original literature. So then fast forward um, to a little bit long, a little bit later, and, you know, or if you just think about it today, the way that they explain anonymity is that then what happened was word got out and people were really excited 
um, about the, the prospect of helping more people with alcoholism. And so what happened was there were, there were press, there were a lot of inquiries. Um, even uh, Rockefeller himself had thrown some, some infamous dinner where he would, and invited members of Alcoholics Anonymous that he knew and wanted to learn about it. And then someone ended up writing about that. Um, and more people heard about it. And I think the membership, they said, grew, you know, doubled that year after that came out. So then more and more people were interested in learning about it and journalists and the press and media. And that's where they said, okay, now what we need to do is clarify that our experience dictates that we probably should, as a principle, just um, maintain humility on the level of press, maintain anonymity, um, you know, from the principle of humility. To, to keep kind of the individual egos out of it. And really today still it's about, you'll never hear someone, hopefully, um, you should never hear someone go on television or get interviewed and, you know, and basically identify themselves as a representative of a 12 step program saying, I speak for such and such program, right? Like right now I'm doing this video and I'm just talking about a recovery concept. I'm giving you some history behind it, but I am not a spokesperson for any particular program or any particular organization. Um, and that's kind of the difference. So, you know, I, I was just thinking about, imagine some years back, if you're familiar with um, Charlie Sheen, the actor, he's a celebrity, right? And um, he had some very public struggles with addiction um, and other issues, and they were very public. And had he been some kind of a spokesperson for a 12-step program, um, there'd be many people who might look at him and his behavior back then when he was struggling. And... Um, I have no idea what he's what he's doing today, but I'm just speaking on um, several years back now, where it was very much in the media um, about his struggles. And what if he had been a spokesperson for a 12-step program? How many people would look at that and say, wow, well, that program doesn't work, right? Um, that guy's kind of crazy. I'm not going to go where he goes. Um, and actually, when he, when he was having some type of a, um, a breakdown, if you will, he... I remember seeing him on television or, or reading an article about him and him saying something like he was saying disparaging comments about um, certain fellowships like Alcoholics Anonymous or, or Narcotics Anonymous. And, and he really wasn't um, giving accurate information. So that's, that's a perfect example of where that concept comes of uh, an anonymity on the level of the press. Um, really it's about preserving the integrity of something that's, that's doing good for others, right? So, Going back to this principles over personalities, that principle of humility um, and that, that um, idea of anonymity is to keep this, um, this program, one path to recovery that's, that's worked for a lot of people, you know, for millions of people over the years, um, to, to kind of preserve it in, in a manner that, um, so that individuals can't kind of, kind of uh, if, you know, if it's not, if it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of thing. Uh, so people can't kind of messy the waters there, muddy the waters there. Um, and so, you know, the practical application today, so today there's certainly still stigma with alcoholism, right? But there's a lot less than there was at least in the, in the 1940s. And there's a lot more information out there. It's not a secret society anymore. People know it exists. It's portrayed in pop culture, in, you know, in, in uh, movies and television shows. And most people know someone who's sober, who's in some type of recovery program. So the stigma thing is not as much of an issue with the anonymity. Um, now it, it's just more about that. Um, the principles over personalities that I want to talk about today um, really can apply to, to the individual. So in terms of preserving it, in the grand scheme of things, I just sort of explain that, why, why that, that concept is there. With the individuals, I think what's important to point out is that this is a disease, okay? Addiction is a disease that quite often in its active component is about isolation. It's a very isolating type of illness, the, the mental component of it, um, the, the, the emotional, spiritual component of it. And so, so many paths of recovery um, include some type of connection, some type of community, um, connecting with others, um, even if it's just connecting with a therapist, um, or with an outpatient group, with a with a twelve step group, whatever the case may be. Um, getting out of that isolation, where you're more vulnerable to um, continue to engage in, in the addiction. So, with that in mind. Principles over personalities, when it comes to, um, to AA as a whole, to different 12 steps as a whole, 12 step groups as a whole, principles over personalities was about putting the common good of the program, of the organization, 
um, before personal desire. Okay, so we can kind of flip that and talk about it in terms of how does it affect someone individually? A newcomer, someone new to getting sober and recovering and new to some type of recovery program, having that type of um, struggle of the, still having that 90% of the addiction that, that really is that, if you think of the 10% as the drinking or the, the drug use or whatever the addictive behavior is, the 90% being the thinking that leads you to kind of stay stuck in that or go back to that. Part of that 90% um, of that thinking can really be looking for excuses to isolate or reasons to not get well, to um, not connect, to not reach out for help. And so with principles over personalities, one of the things that often comes to mind when I think of that is in a practical application. Say uh, someone is relatively new in a recovery program and they're attending um, you know, some type of support group or recovery meetings, and maybe they don't like something that goes on. Maybe they don't like something that someone says. Maybe there's some gossip. There's some, something that makes them feel like th these individuals, certain individuals, um, aren't doing the right thing. Now, if we look at the principles, right, the principles of these of 12-step um, programs have never changed, right? And, and principles can be something like, like what we talked about before, humility, honesty, doing the next right thing. Um, if we put principles before personalities, if we make decisions based on a principle of a personality, then, um, then you're not going to miss the magic. Um, you know, there's, there's some magic that happens in, in recovery, in, in these recovery communities. And it's hard to describe. It's kind of more of an experience than it is something that you can just explain in words. But um, those who have experienced some type of a spiritual experience through that process of surrendering um, from their active addiction to surrendering and asking for help and then connecting in whatever way um, and, um, you know, being, being guided by higher principles in, that, in this process of getting well. Um, there's some magic in that. There's, there's, there's some, uh, some real healing that occurs. And if we focus on excuses and reasons and individual personalities and, you know, character defects and things like that um, that play out with individuals, that can make a newcomer, you know, someone new to recovery say, I'm out of here, you know, oh, these, you know, that person just uh, hurt my feelings or that person disappointed me. Maybe this isn't for me. And so that's what I really think about when I think about principles over personalities, um, putting principles before personalities in a practical um, fashion with, with individuals, less so with the traditions. Um, I remember a time um, learning about that in my own process. And it's very easy to say, oh gosh, you know, maybe I don't feel safe here or I don't want to be around this particular group because I don't know who's talking about what or who knows what or who's engaging in, in you know, things that aren't really um, of, a, of integrity or a higher principle. But I remember having a friend that said to me, you know, Mayor, people in 12-step um, in programs are like people anywhere else, right? They're fallible. People will, will sometimes disappoint you. They'll sometimes let you down. Um, we're all human, regardless of what program you're in or not in. But the principles, the principles of, of these recovery programs, the higher principles will never fail you. So that really stuck with me. Um, and that's what, if you take one thing away from uh, my rambling today, um, please take that away. That, you know, we've got, we're dealing with, a, with an illness that really, again, is so focused on isolating, that, is, that has the most power against us uh, to harm us when we are alone and isolated and not seeking help and not connecting with others. So, you know, the personalities are like, um, if you get caught up in the personalities, if you get caught up in the individuals and, and, and looking at, at individuals' faults, uh, then, then you miss that, that bigger picture of the principles that everyone's, um, that you, we only have control over we're striving towards, but that have, um, have never really failed anyone, right? Um, and I think that's, I think that's the, the summary of what I want to talk about today. And, and again, and just bring up that, going back to that 12th tradition where, where it talks about um, the connection with anonymity today. If you've, if you've never um, seen the documentary, there's a documentary called The Anonymous People. And um, it was put together, I, th I think the, the person who produced it came out of uh, Connecticut um, and in the Northeast here. And basically it's, it's really about that, that shift where 
defining anonymity changed over time and how now it's, you know, stigma is, is something that can keep people from getting help. And so putting principles here first um, in terms of the, the anonymous people, if I recall the message correctly there, it, it's really about, you know, how can we help people? And if, this, if, if there are paths to recovery that are so helpful, let's not keep them a secret. <laughs> and it even says that in here. It really says that only in the very beginning were they fear-based when they, when they kind of used the term anonymous. And over, over the years, they changed it to be more about um, a principle, not about, um, you know, persona fears of individuals. Um, so that's enough out of me today on this topic. If you would like to uh, contribute to the discussion, please use the comment section below. If there are other topics you'd like us to uh, discuss on here and that you want me to cover, um, also use the comments. I appreciate it. If you got anything out of this video, if you can like it, um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, share the video. And uh, I look forward to um, being back here with, with other recovery concepts and also sharing other holistic resources that can um, support you on whatever your path to recovery is. Thanks, see you next time.